So this is Matt Paulson. I'm looking at a TikTok video that's uh, getting a lot of hits. And it says a lot of crazy things about Jesus not being God. So I wanted uh, to go through this one by one so you can see what nonsense he's purporting. In the Bible, Jesus never directly calls himself God. Not even once. If Jesus claimed to be God, don't you think that that would have been a pretty important part to include in the Gospels? Exactly, and you must read the Gospels in order to know what they say. Like, Jesus is Lord. What does that mean in Luke 2, verses 10 to 11? Or Jesus is the Savior in the same verses. Or Jesus is the sacrifice that Jesus said in Matthew 26, 2. That is the message Jesus was bringing to the world. Now listen to this. In Numbers 23, 19 and Hosea 11, 9, the Bible says that God is not a man nor a son of man. Now listen to Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, not the son of man that he should repent. God does not lie. God does not need to repent. That's the message of Numbers 23, 19. And then look at Hosea 11, 9. It's exalting God. It says God is not a man. He's the Holy One in the middle of the midst of the people of Israel and that he will come with not with just... Uh, wishy-washy things like a man would do, he will come with terror. But Jesus is said to be a man and a son of man all throughout the New Testament, like John 8.40. John 8.40? Did he say John 8.40? Did he read it? Did he read John 8.58? Did he read that? What did, what did Jesus say? Jesus said to the Pharisees, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. And the Jews said to him, You're not yet 50 years old, and you've seen Abraham? And Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went outside of the temple, going through the midst of them. This is a solid verse that Jesus is saying he's God. Acts 2.22 Acts 2.22 says, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, him being delivered in determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands and have crucified, put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. That's Acts 2, 22 to 24. It's a sermon about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do about his deity. Until you get to Acts 20, 28, where it says, The Holy Spirit has made you overseers to the shepherd of the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Acts 20, 28. Timothy 2, 5. The Apostle Paul says, For there is one God and one meter between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified in due time. And the Apostle Paul says Jesus is God in many verses in Romans 9, 5, Philippians 2, 6, 2 Peter 1, 1, and Timothy 2, 13. Matthew 16, 27. In Matthew 16, 27, Jesus says, For the Son of Man will come in his glory and his Father with all the angels, and he will reward each one to his works. What what rewards? Jesus is giving out rewards? It must be because he is God. For he says, For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the Son. In John 5, 22. In fact, Jesus often seems to outright deny that he's God, like in Luke 18, 19, where Jesus says, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Yes, uh, no one is good but God alone. But Jesus is the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. If Jesus is good, that means he must be saying he is God, because only God is good. And John 14, 28, where he says, My Father is greater than I. So how can God be greater if they're the same? Well, think about it. So in Genesis it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So a man and woman are one flesh. But yet we find out in the Apostle Paul writing that he says, The head of every man is Christ, and the head of a woman is a man. Now wait a minute. How can they be... Join together one flesh, but the man is the head of the woman. Think about it. They are equal and the same. So likewise, in the Godhead, we can have God the Father being the head and the Son being subservient, 
but yet they are equal and one. See John 10, 30. The historian Bart Ehrman, who was once an evangelical Christian, said, During his lifetime, Jesus himself didn't call himself God and didn't consider himself God, and none of his disciples had any inkling at all that he was God. Au contraire! Look at John 14, verses 7 to 9, and also Jesus forgives sins in Matthew 9, 5, and then he gives life in John eleven twenty five, and nobody knows the Father but Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty seven. And Jesus does exactly what God does in John 5, 19. And the will of God is to look to the Son for salvation in John 6, 40. And he's the way and the truth and the life. And no man goes to the Father except through Jesus in John 14, 26. Bart Ehrman is wrong. He's an atheist. And he can say a lot of things to be provocative. But what he says is not true. If Jesus was explicitly God, it would have been said everywhere in the Bible, but it's not said anywhere. But this guy has never read the Bible, otherwise he wouldn't be saying stupid statements like that. Here's on the screen are 50 Bible verses that show that Jesus is God, and that he has special abilities, and that he has done the will of the Father, which is still not exclusively making him not God, but it is making him a person within the Godhead. Isaiah 9, 6 speaks of Jesus and it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Also, if you doubt that, if that's about Jesus, uh, and you think it's Hezekiah, check Isaiah 10, 20-21, where it says, The Lord is the Mighty God.